All right, let's talk riding basics. Although you don't need to know how to ride when coming here to the Denver Polo Club, we're gonna teach you everything, but let's talk riding basics. Your legs are just like the horse's legs. Your body is just like the horse's body. Imagine we're like monkeys up on top of their shoulders. So as we're running around and we're throwing our bodies around, these horses have to balance us as well. So there's a few things that we need to keep in mind when riding. We wanna keep a strong core, we wanna keep a strong lower leg, but we wanna keep a soft and quiet hand. You should be able to ride on your polo pony when you're done here at the Denver Polo Club with your arms crossed and moving your hips around. Craig's gonna demonstrate the two main gates that we use in polo, a trot, where we use a posting trot, and then a canter. We also use a post within the canter so that we stay off of the horse's back. While Craig's demonstrating, I'm gonna help you out and show you a few things that he's doing in order to make this thousand pound animal move around. All right guys, notice here, Craig is demonstrating a canter. The canter is what's widely used in polo. You have multiple gears within the canter. You go through first gear, which Craig's doing right now, all the way up to seventh gear, which is like 35 to 45 miles an hour, as fast as a racehorse. A few things that I want you to notice while Craig is riding, first and foremost, his heels. Notice his toes are lifted and his heels are down. Next, as we work our way up the body, he has his arm around the horse or his legs around the horse as if they're arms, giving that horse a hug, saying, hey, I got you. As we work our way up a little further than that, notice his seat and his hips. His hips are soft, his seat is glued to the saddle. His hips are open, his shoulders are tall, and he's engaging his core. Maneuvering the horse using his core, not his shoulders, not his hands. Craig's gonna demonstrate the posting trot for us, which is another gait that we use in polo. A posting trot is an up-down rhythm much like dancing. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The horse helps push him up and down, but again, Craig is engaging his calf muscle around the horse's belly, as well as his core to rise and fall with the horse's rhythm. Now Craig's gonna demonstrate a posting canter. In polo, we use the posting canter a lot so that we stay off the horse's back. When they're going 35 miles an hour, we wanna give that horse as much freedom through their back as possible. Again, notice his shoulders are tall, he's strong through his core, heels are down, and he and the horse are like poetry in motion. Nice and relaxed. The other thing I want you to notice as Craig's cantering in the circle is notice where his eyes are. His eyes are looking up. That's another important thing in polo, is not only are you thinking multiple plays ahead of time, but you also have to make your horse react multiple plays ahead of time. So if you look down, or if you look at the hood of your car, you'll crash into something. But if your eyes are up, you'll know just where to go. All right guys, we're gonna talk details about polo. First of all, Polo is a lot like golf, hockey, and chess mixed into one sport. Golf, keep your head down and follow through. Hockey, scoring is the same. One goal is one, goal, one point. If you take the blue lines away and the goalies away, the game and the passing is very similar. Then let's talk chess. You're thinking three or four plays ahead of time while going 35 miles an hour on a thousand pound animal. That's the real passion of polo. There's also two types of polo. You have outdoor polo, which is played out on the grass. A smaller, porous plastic ball is used. Then you have the arena ball. The arena is played in a smaller sand footing used with an inflatable ball and the goals are shorter, and there's only three players on each side. Whereas on the outdoor field, there's four players on each side. 
Each period is called a chucker. You have four to six chuckers within each match. A chucker lasts seven and a half minutes long and the time is stopped any time a foul has occurred. And remember, fouls are only for the horse's safety. So if a rider falls off and they're not endangering the play, the play actually keeps going. But if a horse is endangered, the play stops immediately. So each chucker lasts about 15 minutes. A four hour, a four chucker match lasts about one hour. A six chucker match lasts about two hours. So we're hoping to see you, whether it's for one, two, three, or four chuckers out here, either on the field or on the sidelines. We'd love to have you be a part of the Denver Polo Club family. And remember, you don't need to know how to ride. You don't need your own horse. You just need to have a good fun attitude and we'll give you some memories to create. Hi, welcome back to the Denver Polo Club. We're gonna talk about the equipment that you need to play polo. First and foremost, you can see the horses standing here. When you show up to the Denver Polo Club, we have your pony ready to go for you. Mark and Craig are mounted on two high-powered thoroughbred polo ponies. We're gonna have your polo pony waiting for you, dressed in all this equipment you can see here. No worries to wear whites, just come dressed in your blue jeans and some sort of cowboy boot. We'll take care of the rest. Looking at the polo professional, if you start up at the top, you can notice their helmet. You can have two types of helmet, one with a face mask and the other one without a face mask. In polo, it's a really good idea to always have some sort of eye protection. You can always get a new face, but you can't get new eyes. As you work your way down, notice the polo players are in white pants. That's for tournament play. No worries, just wear your blue jeans. You'll be just fine. Your polo boots are just like a cowboy boot, but they come up a little bit higher. On your polo boots, they're also made of thicker leather so that if ball hits you or another horse hits you, you're protected in the leg. We also wear knee pads to cover our knees for the same situation. If you get knocked in the knee, you'll have a protective padding over your kneecap. Other equipment for the player, you'll notice their mallet. I have a foot mallet, a short mallet here, so when you're on the ground, you can hit. These guys have polo mallets. They're 52 inches long is the average height of a polo mallet made out of bamboo. A lot of people think that we hit it with the short end, but we actually hit it with the sweet spot where the head and the cane meet. As you move down, you'll notice both players have gloves on their right hand. You wanna make sure that your mallet is an extension of your hand. As you move down, you can also see the horse's equipment. Notice their bridles. These bridles are a little bit like a comparison of Toyota Camry brakes versus NASCAR brakes. These bridles are like NASCAR brakes. Every other horse that rides around, they're like Toyota Camry brakes. Polo ponies are a little bit cooler than the average pony. As you work your way down the equipment, you'll notice that the saddles are what we call close contact saddles. There's not a lot between the rider and the horse, so that as you're moving down the field, you can feel the horse underneath you and that horse can feel you and you move down the field as one. As you move down the polo ponies, you can notice their leg wraps. We have polo wraps on their legs. We also put another boot on their leg, a back hind boot on their tendons to protect their tendons, as well as an over boot or a bell boot that goes on their hooves. All the equipment is for the player's safety and the horse's safety. A little known fact, notice their manes are shaved. Polo Pony's manes are shaved, more of a tradition, but it also keeps for nice clean lines as you're running down the field, 35 miles an hour, chasing this little white ball. Their manes are shaved. When polo was brought from India to England, they were afraid of lice. So the ponies came off the boats with their manes shaved and their tails shaved. But now it's turned into a little bit more of a tradition. Your polo pony is your top priority. That's your teammate when you jump out onto the field. So these guys always get extra cookies and kisses here at the Denver Polo Club. Looking forward to having you join us here on this nice green field. Hi, I'm Erica. Welcome back to the Denver Polo Club. I'm standing here with polo professional Craig Russell. We're gonna go over your four basic swings. 
Now there's multiple shots in polo or multiple swings in polo, but we're gonna teach you the first four shots in polo. Little known fact, polo is only a right-handed sport and that's for safety. As you're running down the field, everybody knows where everybody's gonna be on the field. So if you'll notice, all polo players have their mallets in their right hand. Craig's gonna demonstrate four shots, the offside forward shot, the offside back shot, the near side forward shot, and the near side back shot. Craig, will you demonstrate the offside forward shot for us? Notice the rotation in his shoulders. Also notice the rotation in his hips and body as he comes out of the saddle. The next shot that Craig is gonna demonstrate is the near side forward shot. Notice the difference between the near side, which is the left side of the horse, and the right side, or the off side of the horse. Craig is gonna demonstrate the back shot. Notice the rotation in his shoulders once again, as well as the follow through and looking where the ball has gone. Notice Craig's near side back shot. Starting up by the horse's ear, rotating his shoulders so that his shoulders are parallel with the horse's back and following through right where he wants the ball to go. The most important part to any polo swing is your follow through. Making sure that you follow through where you want the ball to go.